Hey you guys, sorry about that. Um, I guess this video is getting a little long. Anyway, um, so we have talked about trespasses. Carol, it's fault again. Uh, <laughs> trespasses, and I looked it up, and this word, uh, I searched trespass and trespasses. But the specific word trespasses is used a total of 12 times. Uh, I know it says 10 here, but sometimes it's used twice. So you have to look for that. You can't just look right here and see, oh, 10, so it must be 10. That's not a good way to do it. You have to look for every single time and count every time it's bolded here. So one, two, three. So that's not two, that's three. Anyway, so I found that it was used 12 times. And then I also looked at the words that were around it. For example, I commonly saw the words forgive quite frequently. And I also found words um, like sin, dress, um, that, or uh, words like sins, there we go, like in our text. Uh, but mostly, oh my goodness, you see the word forgiveness all the time, counting. So I guess it's really only one time it said sins. So maybe that wouldn't be worth saying, but for sure, uh, you see the word forgiveness commonly around it. So then I'm going to type that, and what I did here is I already did that part because I only have one hand here. So I'm going to take out sins because now that I look at it, I don't really think that's significant enough. So it's going to use words such as being forgiven, okay, or maybe I could say take out the period there, or forgive. And maybe if I was you, I would write forgiveness as well. Just put all the different forms of the word in there. Uh, notice how I put the period inside the quotation marks. And uh, since I'm citing a word for words, you put those in quotation marks as well. So uh, the next thing I did is after I looked at that, I'm going to go on to dictionary.com. And that's just a really easy way to look up words. I have the word trespass. I looked it up and I found uh, different, oops, I found different uh, definitions. Yes, Carolyn's fault. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, so essentially all I did is I just highlighted it and copy and paste it. Now here is what's important. Let's get rid of the saddest words. We don't want any of that. Um, here's what's important, okay? What's important is that you read through all the definitions and you only choose the ones that are most uh, um, um, accurate to the way it is being used in here. And so for example, I found that this word really is not used as a verb. The word trespass is not used in, in, in or trespasses or whatever, is not used as a verb in any of these examples. And so what I did is I went down here and I, and I said it's used exclusively as a noun. And I thought that was really interesting that it was only used as a noun. So when people made this Bible translation, they only used the noun version of this word of, of trespass. They didn't use it in its verb form. And, and honestly, I don't know why. That would be something I'd have to look up. Um, it is it that doing that type of study is kind of beyond uh, what we're going to be doing. But if so, if that's something that you're interested in, I'd look it up. I'd look up the word in Greek, um, which is kind of what you'd have to do in order to understand why they only use the the noun version of this word. Why do they choose the word trespass? Why is that the best English word? I don't know. But but anyway. So I chose these two definitions I thought best fit. An unlawful act, I thought that fit this very well. Um, forgive others trespasses, it sounds like God is the ruler, he has set the laws and we have trespassed them. And I also really like this one, an encroachment or an intrusion. So we have made an encroachment or an intrusion, intrusion to God. So I picked those two because I thought those best fit the context that I saw in the text. Please do not just copy and paste a definition. Please read it. This is serious. We do not want uh, you to just mindlessly find definitions and put them in there because if I would have put the verb uh, definition in there, well, that wouldn't be appropriate to the context. 
And so for a lot of this, you, I, I'll admit, you will need my help. You will need me to come and check, um, Mr. Runk, is this being used as a verb or a noun, just in case you don't know. A good way to check, though, is if you see words like your and there before it, or the, or a, it's probably not a verb. It's probably a noun. Um, but what's important is that you probably should ask me, and just to make sure uh, that you're not uh, finding um, words that, uh, you're, or you're not using definitions that actually don't apply to the, how the word is used in the Bible. That could make your word study look really silly, and we don't want that. So, in conclusion, look at how this is formatted. This is how yours will be formatted as well. You have the word right here. You have a dash. You have according to the ESV, you will say, what translation will you use? This is a question you should answer. What, will you be using the ESV? Yes or no? No. That's right, you will not be using the ESV, you're using the NIV, so you'll have to type that there. Um, then I say this word is used blank times. I'll share this document with you as well so that you can uh, know exactly what I expect. I want you to use this sentence right here, or this part of the sentence. This word is used blank times. You'll say this as well. It is commonly used with words such as blank or blank. Uh, the dictionary defines this as blank or blank. So you blank or blank, and then last, it is commonly used as a blank. And so you will have to fill in those little blanks. Otherwise, I want them to all look just about exactly like this. You'll press enter, and then you'll type your next word. And in my example, my next word would have probably been uh, disobedience or wrath. Well, disobedience would have been a good one, actually. So I'll just do that real quick. So remember, you might not, you might already know the word, but you also should be picking words that maybe could be potentially interesting. And just like that, we make it as it should be. Okay? So as you work on this, you feel free to ask me questions. Also remember that for those of you who go to school, sometimes uh, your teachers do something called flipped classroom. And this is a lot like a flipped classroom. You can you can watch these at home. So they're a little long, but um, feel free to watch these at home. If you had a question, even in your own personal study, as you learn how to um, interpret the Bible, what's important is that you have, um, you, you have me, I guess, uh, wherever you go, you can always find me on YouTube and you can look up what I've said if you really want to study a specific piece of scripture. And this doesn't have to end in May, or the end of May when we'll be done with this uh, little project that we're doing. You can do this for the rest of your life. I'm teaching you a skill that you can actually use for the rest of your life. So um, with that, I'll give it back to me. Bye, guys.